Hello everybody. I'd like to talk to you for a little while. Just a few minutes. I have a message I believe that the Lord laid upon my heart. Directed straight to the senior leadership of Fort Hood. And I hope that you would listen. I hope this makes its way there because I come in the name of the Lord, not some limp-wristed, jellyfished, backbone Jesus, but a risen Savior with fire in his eyes that's, that's going to judge and hold you and I both accountable for our lives. That Jesus. Back in 1983, I went, when I was a private, school field, school field barracks. I was saved. I was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And God laid it on my heart to go to a command sergeant major's personal residence on post. Just show up at the door and tell him about Jesus Christ and his need for a savior his need for repentance and to invite him out to church. I paused out front and I prayed. I prayed, I said, God, I said, I'm asking you to humble him, humble him so that he can hear your word, humble him en enough so that he doesn't throw me off the property, which is what I thought would, might happen. I didn't know what to expect, but um, I knocked on the door and uh, the Sergeant Major answered. And right that second, a little tiny gnat flew into his eyeball and landed on his eyeball. And he couldn't say nothing. Who are you? Why are you knocking on my door? Who told you to come here? Who, what unit are you in? Yeah, you know. You know. All of the, all of the uh, things that could have been said. None of that. He's doing this. One eye open on me. Like, just like that. Hold on a second. Gunner! Come on, boy. Gunner! Hey, get over here and sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Stay. Holding his eye like this, it's watering. He, he couldn't get it out. It just stuck on his eyeball. And he's, he's, he's looking at me like this. And there I was, 19 years old. Actually, probably more like 18. Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. And I said, Sergeant Major, I, I want to uh, tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. How that he died on the cross for your sins. And how you need to repent of your sin and turn to him. And follow him and take up your cross. There's a reality in him and I, I just care for you. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to die lost, Sergeant Major. And he couldn't say hardly a word because of that gnat. And I told him all about the Lord, everything that I knew at that time. Invited him out to church and uh, went on my way. And I don't know, I, I thought of this whenever I was putting this together, you know, and I, I, pr I prayed today that whoever is hearing this and if it's meeting somebody, I come with you and uh, with a full respect i'm retired with 21 years i, I come to you at, at parade rest um uh but i pray that god humbles you I, I pray that that he humbles i've been humbled myself we've all should be praying for that but i i pray that god humbles you that you would hear this message just a few minutes here that you would hear this you've been blessed with leadership ability you've been blessed with leadership you can, you can command a crowd. People would follow you into war, but you know enough about Jesus. Let's say you are saved. Let's say you know God. You've had an experience with God. 
You know the Bible. You were raised in church. You know enough about God, but you don't ever say one word. You don't breathe a word to those young soldiers out there about Jesus Christ and, and, and what he's done for you. You never testify of his power in your life. Maybe that's because it was so long ago, decades and decades ago, that you no longer even have a relationship with God. But you have these gifts, leadership gifts. And I, there, I, I've met very few Sergeant Majors that didn't have them. You know, and this is not just Sergeant Majors I, I want to talk to. This is anybody that may, this may come across. Um, if this come across any officers, uh, I have the utmost respect. And, and I come to you in humility. But if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, and you're here and you're serving Uncle Sam and you have put Uncle Sam on the, this high pedestal while these young soldiers are dying, while they're, while they're uh, struggling in life, while they're struggling to look for role models and you're not doing the right thing, your hell will burn hotter and your eternity will, burn, will, will last longer. Because the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. You have a lot of authority. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. I've met a lot of uh, NCOs out there that couldn't make it, you know, couldn't make it to different ranks that they had a heart for, that they deserved for whatever reason. But there you are, okay? That's a gift from God. That's a gift from God. There you are. Have you sought the face of God and asked God, what's my ministry at this rank, at this level, at Fort Hood? What's my ministry right here and right now? Man, I, from what I'm seeing, a lot of these young kids, they're just young kids, they're, they're struggling, they're hurting. They don't have role models. They don't have, a, they don't have a, a, a direction. They don't have a compass on life. They don't have it. But there you got the Lord of glory living in your heart. And you won't say a word. You won't breathe a word. Because you think that rank on your chest means everything. Well, let me tell you something. That rank on your chest goes away fast. It goes away fast. You'll be retired soon. And all of those opportunities will be gone. And you've missed every last one of them to make a difference for Jesus Christ in those people's lives. You know, it's not all about Uncle Sam. You know, the Bible, the Bible says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but unto God what is God's. You, can, you could serve Uncle Sam and give Uncle Sam what he has coming, what you owe Uncle Sam. But you can also do it to the point where you've put Uncle Sam up above God, up above God, okay? You can't serve, you can't, you, you gotta choose one or the other, okay? If, if Uncle Sam's gonna be your God, then just let everybody know. I'm not a Christian, I don't love God, I don't claim to serve God, I don't have any allegiance to him. My allegiance is all to Uncle Sam. But if you're gonna serve Jesus Christ, you're going to have to put Uncle Sam down here. And Uncle Sam will be fine. Uncle Sam will be fine. But you better keep Jesus Christ on a higher pedestal than Uncle Sam. Your retirement day's coming. Nobody's, nobody's going to remember all this stuff. That, nobody's going to be calling you Sergeant Major. There'll be some people that may say, hey, Sergeant Major. But it's, all, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. But just think about those people's hearts, souls, lives that you may have touched and changed as treasures, as jewels in your crown if you do it in the name of the Lord and for Jesus Christ's sake. That's, that's, what, that's my message to you today. That's my message from Fort Hood, Soldiers of Christ, Rally Point. That, me, I, I am Fort Hood, Soldiers of Christ, Rally Point. It's not a church. God doesn't work in brick and mortar. 
I don't have a suit and tie on for you today, okay? I don't care to impress anybody. I, I serve the Lord. I follow him. Right now, I'm so far out in the wilderness, nobody could find me for days just spending time with the Lord. And the Lord laid this on my heart for you. He laid this on my heart for you. I'm calling on the high leadership at Fort Hood who know Jesus Christ, who know him, okay, to step up to the plate and put him first. All right, to put him first. I know what I'm talking about. Let me just mention a few things before I close. All right, I did 21 years. I've seen a few things in 21 years. All right, and here's some of the things I've seen of people that named the name of the Lord. All right. You know, they, be blessed. You know, all these key catchphrases, be blessed. Psst, don't, don't bring that to me. It does nothing for me. Be blessed. <clears throat> There's a lot of key catchphrases. There's a lot of... Uh, a foolishness going on in churchanity today, Christianity today. A lot. Let me tell you what I've seen. A lot of people naming the name of the Lord, but not speaking up when something is, is definitely wrong. Standing idly by and committing the sin. Good boy. Good boy, Gunner. Committing the sin of, of uh, omission. Not saying anything. There's many instances where you, as a man of God, as a woman of God, should say something. Don't have, you don't need to have your promotion in mind all the time. Okay? It's okay to have your own conscience. Okay? It's okay. And, 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 and that's what these young soldiers need to see. Is somebody that's not owned by the system. They're not owned by that system. But they're walking in step with another commander and his name is Jesus Christ because he is alive. And there are people that are listening and in tune and in step. Okay? And are you one of them? Are you one of them? All right, not speaking up. Okay, standing for what is right because uh, you won't stand for what is right because some backslidden and wicked person that is in higher authority than you okay means more to you than God does so you won't stand for what is right do you know how many people that hurts on the bottom underneath you to this day there are so many things that I've seen that, that has affected me where the people way above me never even realized the people they were, they were standing on had the, their foot on their neck, how they affected them because they had no conscience. They had no compass. They didn't do what was right. They weren't in submission and surrendered to Jesus Christ. God is calling you, sir. God is calling you, ma'am. God is calling you, uh, NCO, Sergeant Major. God's calling people to this, these standards and you need to step into it. Take that first step. God will meet you there. Don't worry about later on down the road. Just start taking steps. Just start taking steps and God will help you. Okay? Be blessed. Everybody says, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. I hear it all the time. Be blessed. But they're pumping rap music with all kinds of foul language. Okay, that doesn't glorify God, but they want to say, be blessed in the name of the Lord or God bless you. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what a real blessing is. The Bible says that when God blesses, he adds no sorrow. He adds no sorrow. There are blessings of God that when they come, when he gives from his hand, there's no sorrow with it. None. It's pure blessing. I know. I know. I've been a recipient of that. You are a leader with gifts, but using them all for Uncle Sam? 
is not a wise choice. Uncle Sam will leave you high and dry. I'm calling up on the senior leadership who have been bought with a price to answer the call of taking up your cross and following Jesus Christ. Have you thought about using your great influence and your great talents for the master? I want to remind you that there is a parable called the parable of the ten talents where Jesus gives one man two, another man five, and another man ten. And long story short, it's all about how each man uses those talents. But I, I want to close with this sobering, sobering scripture of what Jesus said to the one that did nothing with the talents that he was given. Verse 22 of Luke chapter 19. His master replied, this is Jesus speaking. These are the words in red. You wicked servant. Oh, but you want to live for Uncle Sam. You want your raider, your senior raider, to speak so well of you. You know how disgusting that is in the, in the eyes of God? You're living for time and not for eternity. His master replied, you wicked servant, I will judge you by your own words you knew that i am a harsh man withdrawing what i did not deposit and reaping what i did not sow why then did you not deposit my money in the bank and upon my return i could have collected it with interest in other words why didn't you multiply from these from this money talents back then was money then he told those standing by take the mina from him or the talent and give it to the one who has the 10 talents master they said he already has 10 jesus replied i tell you that everyone who has will be given more but the one who does not have even what he has will be taken away from him and these enemies of mine now listen to this and these enemies of mine who were unwilling for me to rule over them. Bring them here and slay them in front of me. That's, those, those words are in red. That's Jesus speaking. That's Jesus speaking. That's Jesus. You see, Jesus is not this lovey-dovey, long-flowing hair Loving everybody. Everything's good to go. He doesn't want to offend. Oh, no. Oh, no. You've been a victim of church entity. You've been a victim of following those who have not walked with the master. Jesus said, and these enemies of mine, who, who are the enemies? The ones who did nothing. Who did nothing. who were unwilling for me to rule over them, you won't let Christ rule over you. That's sobering. I fear just thinking about that. When I fail to let Christ rule over me, and there are, there are many times that I, f I drop the ball. Oh, but then I run back to him. I have to run back to him. I want to stay close to him. But some of you, you've been gone for so long. You've been gone for so long. There's no evidence that you even pray anymore and now you're living for Uncle Sam's giving him the years as the years go by 
10 years in the military, 15 years in the military, 20 years, going on 25 years in the military, and you say you know God, but you've never done one thing with the gifts that God has given you. Not one thing. You spent them all for Uncle Sam. Why don't you get your nose back in the Bible and start looking at what it looks like to promote Jesus Christ, to, to uh, be like Jesus Christ, to walk with Jesus Christ, to do something for Him, not for the systems out there. Could you imagine what would take place if somebody here that has the influence, the power, the authority would start saying, you know what? Hey, I'm a sergeant major over this battalion, but uh, off post or whatever, um, we're going to start having, you know, once a month, we're going to start having a, a time where we're going to have a prayer meeting. What's wrong? Did that scare you a little bit? Too scared to have a prayer, call a prayer meeting? Your heart ain't right. Have a prayer meeting. If you can find a chaplain that would be willing to allow God to move, then get him involved. But there's so much that can happen in a prayer meeting and then promote it like, hey, we need to get back right with God. I'm your sergeant major and Boy, I tell you, my, my heart, my heart, my heart needs it. Yeah, the people that would hear that, the Lord would speak to their hearts and smite them because the Sergeant Major came out and said, I, I need God. I need a prayer meeting. I'm setting time aside for, for God. What about, let's start once a month prayer meeting and start praying for revival at Fort Hood. Well, you don't believe God would move? Well, then your God's dead because God is waiting on us to have faith and obedience and to step out in faith and believe that God is a big enough God to do something special here at Fort Hood. I don't know how. I don't have all the answers. But I, I can... I can say that I want it. I want to see God move. Not some man-made, YouTube-promoted, Facebook-promoted stuff. God moving. God moving. And I've seen it before. Where people's hearts start opening up. People's hearts start opening up. And then naturally something happens. And before you know it, God's moving. God's moving. Ball's in your court. Ball's in your court. You know, I'm really living for nothing except this. I knew for many years after I retired that I wanted to do something for God. And after struggling with so many things, I... I landed here. And I'm going to be coming probably once a week with what I hope to be a message from the Lord. I hope you tune in. If you're out there, my phone number, my information is on my Facebook page. I don't know what I can do. But let's start praying that God starts opening our hearts. There's so much going on. So many things are happening in the world. Don't you sense it? Don't you sense the fact that we could wake up tomorrow morning and the whole economy has crashed and China is invading possibly or whatever, but major, major, major bone chilling events it can happen we become complacent 
we have. Go dust your Bible off. Dust your Bible off and this week. Open it up. Start reading it just a little bit each day. When God speaks to your heart, stop right there and allow that to just kind of soak in, marinate in that. All right? All right. God bless you.